Zutaragi here, coming to another video review, and yes, new camera, with a new microphone, just get used to it. And today, as you can see, I'll be taking a look at Voyager Class Bludgeon from Revenge of the Fallen. Here's his size compared to a sta soda can? Almost said Stadia can, what the hell? Anyway, <laughs> it's actually slightly more relevant than Stadia. Here we have Bludgeon in his vehicle mode, which is mostly a dark forest green, off-white, brown, a lighter green, and a very garish orange, as well as some bits of extremely dark brown. It's almost black, but not quite. View from above and below. Kind of see most of the robot there. Eh. As far as what he can do in vehicle mode, he has little casters he rolls on. He does so fairly well. Machine gun up top can pivot all the way around. And he has a ratchet, a ratcheted pivot in the main turret. It's a fairly decent ratchet. Unfortunately, due to the way the uh, cannon works, there's no up and down, which is mildly disappointing. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, on with the transformation. And so to start, we just sort of start getting stuff detached. Pull the treads off of these tabs. Bring this panel up and out of the way. Get these panels attached from the main body. Get these panels off of, the, off of this flap. And then we get started on moving things. Just go ahead and get what will be his legs out of there. So you can bring this section all the way down and it will snap into place. Take these green panels and if they haven't already, um, untab them from here. Just a tab that goes in this little space right there. Bring it all the way around on these white struts. And as you do on this side, that little clip will flop, flop, flip out. Fold in the uh, crotch section. Do the same thing on this side. Bring that out on this white armature. Get it past everything. Bring that in. Go ahead and split the front of the tank. And then you need to try and compress all this, which is much harder than it looks. Go ahead and bring down the front skirt armor. As for the arms, it's easier to leave them like, it's easier to work on them when you leave them facing up like this. Attach the forearms from this panel. Bring it out and down. Flip out the hand. Rotate that around. Bring the arm down. Fold down that panel. The same thing over here. Bring the arm down and straighten it out. Bring out the hand. Fold down that panel. Get that down. Take the leg and rotate it so that the tread portion is facing forward. Flip this panel down. Get this back leg panel out of the way. Flip the foot down. Flip out the heel and just straighten out the foot such that he can stand. Just bring that back down, bring that forward, bring this panel down, bring this panel up, bring out the foot, flip out the heel, get all that situated so that he can stand properly, get the arm situated, and then take the tank turret and split this portion and you will get a little bit of automorph as that flips out like that. And then angle this until this shorter blade is pointing straight up. And there you have Revenge of the Fallen. Oop, bludgeon. In his robot mode. Here's his size compared to a soda can. 
definitely bigger than Voyagers nowadays. And that's a good thing. Yoink. His colors are a little bit different in this mode. He's got that same dark green, as well as the off-white, brown, orange, lighter green, and that almost black brown. But added is a much lighter orange, specifically, or almost yellowish orange, on the chest and front skirt, as well as a little bit of red in the eye. Excuse me, a little bit of red in the eyes and bone white on the face. Look at the legs. View from above and below. His articulation, it's not great, but it's better than a lot of more recent figures. Not counting on um, Siege and Earthrise and all that. He has a pivot at the head, can just go side to side. The arms can go up about that far before the backpack gets in the way. The arms can go out to the side that far at one joint. If you use the transformation joint, you can get it going farther, but that looks kind of weird. You have a swivel just below the shoulder. You have a fully articulated double jointed elbow, which is very cool. And do the transformation, the hand can swing in a little bit. Just do how he transforms. He doesn't have a waist swivel, but it wouldn't have been too difficult to work one in, I think, but I'm not the engineer. This side skirt can only move in and out a little bit, so it's limited there. Front skirt can move all the way up to accommodate the leg movement. He's on a soft ratchet that can move forward about that far. The back skirt, which I forgot to mention, can move as well. However, the leg can't move back at all due to his butt plate. The legs can move out to the side, but it is very, very limited just due to all this junk here. He has a swivel, technically just above the knee, and he's got that mech alive that was really popular in um, Revenge of the Fallen. Which, I mean, it's okay, but it's nothing great. And he has a decent ratcheted knee. Goes to about 90 degrees, and you've got this panel, which you can really do whatever you want. You can leave it flat like that, or you can swing it out just a little bit, and it will get out of the way for the leg articulation. But I personally prefer to keep it like that. You also have two joints in the ankles. This main one here, that ratchets up and down, and the foot itself which ratchets up and, or swivels, swivels, swings up and down here. And then the, uh, if you move the foot down at this joint, the uh, heel stays in place generally. Sadly, no ankle tilt or pivot, but yeah, that's not necessarily surprising. Although he does sort of have a built-in ankle tilt and a built-in ankle pivot. Gotta admit, that's a new one. Also, for some reason, the sort of tread armor bits have these hinges, which serve no purpose other than to block up the, tr the articulation even more. So the articulation is decent, but it's not mind-blowing. I mean, it gets the job done. As for accessories, he has two. And one, you've been seeing this entire time. The main tank barrel slides into here and come out as a katana. Let's see if I can get him to stand on his own while I show you this. It is fairly well detailed. I mean, it is a soft rubbery plastic and it is... You... Come on, stand, man. As you can see, it's already kind of warped. But there is a fair amount of detailing in it. Getting him to hold it, however, is another matter entirely. 
because rather than the normal five millimeter post, which is common now, or five millimeter post and port, which is common now, he has these sort of standard action figure hooked hands. And so you have to try and get this in through the side, which leads to deformations on the hilt and is part of the reason the blade is so messed up. But if you're not careful, it can also stress and break his fingers. Thankfully, mine hasn't done that, but it can happen. You basically just have to force it in through the side and hope his fingers don't crack. And then just bring it down. And then turn it in his hand until it's sitting in the proper orientation. And there you go. Now, of course, the blade can be stored on him. You can just store it in the spot it was in before, just right here on his back. Or you can use these spots down here. Now, I've seen this one stored in various places, mostly in here. But going on standard ways of storing samurai blades, the larger blade goes on the inner slot. So it goes right through here. And it sort of slots in kind of okay. I mean, it's not, you know, coming out or anything, but it sticks out way too far. And, of course, he has his smaller blade, which I believe this is a Tonto. Tonto or Wakazashi. I'm not too keen on the shorter blades. And this is just a simple, short little blade. I can't tell if that's a molding defect or supposed to be some kind of emblem. Oh, wait, no, it's an A. It's a molding thing. And for some reason, mine has this weird little black thing. I have no idea what it is, but it is actually baked into the plastic. Or the rubbery plastic. Both swords are made out of it. And you can hold this one as well. This one is a bit easier because you can actually slide it into his hand. Although it do the way his hand is molded, it has to sit at an angle. Come on. But again, he can hold it. You can just pop it out of his hand. And then store it in here. Now, unlike the katana, it doesn't lock in. It just sits there loosely. So, I mean, it will just fall out. The katana locks in, but this one does not. I mean, it kind of does, but not in any majorly secure way. There he is with both of his blades stored, which looks okay. Takes up a whole heck of a lot of shelf space. I like it takes up slightly less than him holding the blades, but only slightly. So, yeah. Uh, one odd thing is that the back of his head is molded in a different plastic than the front. So what I'm thinking is they were originally planning on his head being light piped, but due to the fact that it's behind, uh, tucked into this panel, they just rescinded on that that idea and just molded it in solid plastic, but didn't have time to change the files or something. Or, well, it's a pretty neat figure. It's definitely become the standard inspiration for all modern interpretations of Bludgeon. Definitely better than the first movie, Bludgeon. There's really no getting around that. But it's... Okay. Personally, in terms of design, I prefer the R.I.D. bludgeon, but he's just way too small. But, well, that pretty much does it. This has been my review of Voyager Class Revenge of the Fallen bludgeon. Until next time, bye bye